Hi everyone, this is Mahab Ali from the American University in Cairo. And with me today are Rissa, Sheila, and Autumn. And Sarah Silverman is going to show us an activity called, is it Pass the Paper, Sarah? Take Pass it the away. Paper, yeah. Great, thanks. Um, okay, so today we're going to demonstrate an activity called uh, Virtual Pass the Paper or Just Pass the Paper. Um, and this community building activity, um, number one, is a little different than some others in that it's mostly quiet when it's happening. Um, so it gives people an opportunity to connect um, and share some challenges or share thoughts on some topic without speaking verbally too much for most of the activity. So it might be good um, for those who prefer a quieter activity or a more text-based activity versus speaking out loud. Um, and the main way that I use it and the way that we'll demonstrate it today is to um, crowdsource questions or challenges and get advice on something that um, has been difficult for you or has been challenging for you. Um, so the way it's going to work is we're going to be using Google Slides and each participant is going to get their own slide. Um, we will write for a couple of minutes um, explaining what our challenge is. And then the way that we pass the paper virtually is to move down one slide. So after you've written your own challenge, you'll be looking at another person's challenge and um, share a response or some kind of, um, you know, anything that you want to offer as advice. We'll probably do one more round after that. So move down one more slide um, and offer advice to a second challenge. Um, after that, uh, when I facilitate this activity, I also give everybody a chance to look through their responses um, and to share how the responses help them with their challenge um, or if they saw any themes or patterns um, mm -hmm. among the different challenges and responses that they want to share. And so is this like for the, do you want to share your screen and then we can see what the slides look like that we're going to be filling in? Yeah, and usually that's a good idea. you just shared the slides with us in the chat because we're going to be typing in those slides, right? Yes. Um, and these could be like everyone could either write their name at the top or be anonymous either in the posing challenge or in the answer or do you usually impose one thing for everyone? Um, it, it, I think that it could be anonymous if you wanted to be. I usually allow people to choose. Obviously, when you have a small group, and if only one person chooses not to add their name, it is somewhat obvious who it is. So you have mm -hmm. to build some consensus with your group about whether you want to make it anonymous or you want to make it named. Um, I'll also I'll also offer that you know sometimes the person writing the challenge will sign their name, but the people who are giving their responses will not. So that's another um, small variant for today. I think that we can all decide to choose um, whether we want to sign our name for any mm -hmm. any part. Um, so well, if you're only moving down one slide, then they know who you are still because they know who was doing the slide before theirs. So. I guess I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, okay. So for for today, we'll be pretty much named, even if we choose not to literally write our name. We we know, but um, you can do it another way um, when you do this with your own colleagues or students. Um, so the first thing I'll just ask everyone to do is um, if we can spread out and each start on a different slide. I I think I'm going to start on um, slide two, which in this deck actually has the number one on top. Okay, so for how many, how long do we have to write the challenge? Yeah, so I think what we will do for this activity um, is we'll do three minutes for the first one um, and then two minutes for each response afterwards. Um, anyone who's doing this on their own can modulate the time however they want to. You might need to check in um, with your group to see how long it's actually taking them to write out the challenge. And I'll also check in for us to see if more time is needed um, because we haven't done this together yet. So it okay. might be that my time estimates are not right. Okay. Um, okay, so does everybody have their slide? Looks like we have one person who's still on slide one. That was me, I think. So I'm, I'm, I've I'm moved next. So. Okay, Fine. sounds good. Fine. Oh. Okay, great. Oh, oh, I'm number five, I think. Oh, wait, I'll go six. Six. Then. six. Okay. <laughs> We've been running around each other. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so let's start with uh, three minutes. Um, and uh, to write out your challenge, what is one challenge that you have encountered this past term that you would like advice on? So I'll start. I'll start the timer.
sorry, I was muted. So we, we still have about 30 seconds left. Um, anyone who's still typing can go ahead with that. Anyone who's done, if you want, you can always change the formatting or the font size of your response a little bit, just so we can um, get the responses on one page. So. Okay, so our three minutes has come to a close. I just want to check in. Is there anyone who needs a little bit more time to write their challenge? Nope. Okay, um, so I'm going to have us all move down to the next slide. So if you, you're on two, you go to three. Um, if you happen to be on six, you can go back up to um, two, which is the first slide with the challenge. Okay, and um, in a second, I'm going to start a timer for us to respond to this challenge for two minutes. Um, so let's go ahead with that. Okay, let's take about 30 more seconds um, for this response. Okay, so maybe another check in. Does anyone need a little bit more time? Rissa, you need more time? Okay, so let's take 30 more seconds. Is that okay? Great. Okay, so we're going to shift down one more slide and do response to to the new challenge that you're reading.
Let's take a few more seconds to wrap up and um, maybe this time everyone can give me either a thumbs up with your actual thumbs or a reaction when you're ready to go on. Okay, great. Looks like everyone is wrapped up. So the next part of our activity is I'm going to ask everyone to return um, first to their original slide where they wrote their challenge um, and look at the responses that you received. Okay, so has everyone had some time to look through um, the responses that they received? Okay, um, so we've kind of come to the end of the formal part of the activity, but as I said, I always like to do a little bit of a debrief afterward. So um, I'm wondering if anyone wants to share what their experience was like, um, how the responses that they got to their challenge either did or didn't help, um, and how how you could see using this activity also in other other contexts would be interesting to hear as well. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go with them. <clears throat> so yeah, I thought it was a really interesting um, activity actually, and I really liked the pace of it um, and the fact that you, you know you were doing something and you were um, thinking about what you were doing and that you were getting the two responses. So I can see how that could work in many contexts and just as you kind of alluded to at the beginning. So I think just actually for me going through this experience has been really useful. Um, and perhaps the challenge that I put in there is slightly made, <laughs> made up, um, but it has got real uh, elements to it as well. So yeah, I find that really useful. And I think I, I do like um, when you're actually taken away from the screen. So you're not just looking at the other people on the screen and you're, you're doing other things. So I always think that that's good with these kind of synchronous activities as well. So yeah, my first impressions of that is, I think it's a really great activity and I can see lots of potential for it in lots of areas and things that I will do. And I will probably use it um, in January actually. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Sheila. I was thinking about it and to build on Sheila's work um, and talking about it. I was like, it's like a right pair share squared. <laughs> like, like you share and then you share, but you share by writing. Um, and so I was thinking that it was really good, but right pair shares are so difficult to write the question for because it has to be reflective and like authentic but it it's um it's it's really difficult to write good ones for like chemistry because we're so content oriented and so i was thinking about this and i was like how would i write this for a chemistry class um and that that will be the biggest challenge i think in terms of of doing it to get different answers from everyone But like in chemistry, couldn't couldn't it be a challenge in their learning? So it could be a metacognitive kind of process rather than a question about chemistry per se, but a question about what are you struggling with in what we're learning or yeah. know, if you're working on different projects or research. Yeah. 
where are they stuck? You know, that kind of thing, maybe, maybe older. Yeah, people. absolutely. No, I think it could be a, re a self-reflection or a self-assessment or a metacognitive kind of moment of, yeah, that's, mm. uh, that's exactly where I was like, <laughs> I think you would have to do that. Cause if you ask the same question, it's like mm. the discussion boards where everyone ha basically answers the same answer. Mm. And you're like, how many times can we all say the same thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think if you have time, I was just reading this book whose title I have completely forgotten, but talking about how no matter what you teach, and it was by a chemistry professor, actually, no matter what you teach, taking time to have students reflect on that a question like this one, like a challenge they're facing and advice they need on it is going to help the students for the rest of the semester. It's also going to help you know what kind of challenges they're facing, and then you can give them advice as well on that. So like that particular right. question. But of course you wouldn't use it like every week, I guess, maybe like twice in the semester, like at the beginning. Right, right. Well, you I've, past term and like this, this semester with this course and then the end. Yeah, I find that right now they're sharing super personal mm. like stories. Mm -hmm. um, and that is awesome, but it's also really heavy for the other people in the class to kind of deal with because some of these stories are really horrible stories. Um, and so it's, eh, I, I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little at a loss during the pandemic of being like, okay, let's just share something mm -hmm. you're, you know, really struggling with. Cause what they might be struggling with is the fact that they have to go take care of their yeah. elder on the reservation and they don't have mm -hmm. wi-fi or running water right like that's a heavy st or that they had three family members die right like all of these are really big you know so i i don't know that my How students have the boundaries right now academic challenge maybe yeah or, it would have to be really academic them. i think you're right about the safety issue of the recipient um, is, of course, you don't want to dampen like or, or stop them from expressing a really right. huge, heavy thing that is maybe invisible to other students. Right. But ask them, it's something that you think another person can help you with. And I think right. those other things are not things that other people can help them with. Right. So not, like, what would you say right. in response to that? So I mean, think maybe also think about a medium type of challenge that is within um, possibly without underestimating their colleagues, too, because sometimes things people think, oh, they're just students like me, they can't give me advice, but they can probably give you advice on time management or right. things like that. I want right. to say that when I, uh, when I, can you go to my slide, which is I think slide five. Um, yeah, I felt like I wanted to respond to particular things that people gave me <laughs> in mind, because I felt like in the forum of all of us being together, I don't have a chance to say, well, I don't know who said this, but this is what I want. like, not each of us will, will have that chance. But I thought comments would be a good way. Um, yeah. And then they can go back and see what I wrote to them. Um, I also put pictures when I was putting, I put the same picture in both of them. <laughs> but I, I put pictures when I was giving a response because I was trying to, I'm not a very visual person. But I thought it would be like, we're using slides, so we might as well. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for mentioning that because, you know, it, the more this becomes, if it becomes a more sort of content based versus um, reflection on learning a reflection on challenges activity can include links, you can include media, as you're saying, you know, maybe, um, maybe the students who are doing this are identifying a challenge that they're having writing a research paper or something like that. And their fellow students can provide them a link to a resource or a link to um, something that they can cite in their paper or something like that. Yeah, I think that's a good point as well, because you could see it how this could have follow on activities as well. And I think going back to some of the things that Rissa was saying as well, you know, if you kind of structured it a bit more so that it was very focused on that, you know, that discipline specific challenge as opposed to sort of wider things, then maybe it could be the basis for other things. It could also be the basis for some really interesting group work as well, or, you know, offline group work as well. I really like the idea of using the uh, comments feature and also maybe even the notes feature uh, for different types of reflection, right? Yeah, it's also, it's it's interesting to note how that interacts with like anonymity versus being named within mm -hmm. the activity because so Meha did her comments 
um, but it's connected to her Google account. So if you were really committed to this being anonymous, you might ask people to log in without, you know, make the document public. No one needs an account to, to go in and then you could do it that way as well. Uh, I'll just share where this activity originated because I think or origin stories are nice too, is that when I was teaching, you know, TA development, um, we would we would teach a series on applying active learning in lab classes or discussion sections and things like that. Um, and what we originally thought um, was that uh, nobody really knew a lot about active learning. They were coming to this workshop um, to find out what is even the definition of active learning. What are some examples of techniques? It turned out that everybody totally was trying active learning. They're just having a lot of challenges and they needed to workshop them. Um, and we were also um, meeting a lot of students, a lot of international students, um, a lot of English language learners who were really interested in connecting with peers and working through challenges. Sometimes we're a little bit nervous to speak in front of a group, especially if it was a group that people hadn't met before. Um, and so my colleagues and I developed this activity as um, a, a way to get a conversation started um, about challenges with active learning. I love it. And I, I can see so much value in doing it in faculty development work, uh, kind of, um, I attended a session recently about decolonizing faculty development and Autumn and I have work on sort of doing promoting equity and ownership in faculty development and agency. And this is one of those situations where it could be really, really useful because it's not about the faculty developer as expert, but just the faculty helping each other. Right. Um, and, there, there is one thing that I think was driving me a little bit nuts, but it's only because there are five of us that I read everyone's challenges. And what if I had a really good answer for one of the challenges? What do you do with students? Like, do you allow them or do you give, you know, sort of keep it open? If you saw another challenge that you'd like to respond to and you want to go ahead and what do you do? Yeah. So what, I guess one thing that I have found is that it can get a little bit long if you do the full round robin where you cycle through every single challenge. And obviously it depends how many people you have. Um, one thing I've done before is to do kind of like a wild card round at the end where you give everyone a chance to look through all the other challenges and pick one that you want to respond to. So that kind of gives like some more agency as well to kind of first you're assigned by, by chance the ones you respond to and then the last one you choose. Um, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Cool. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing screen if that's okay for now. Yeah. Does anyone have any last comments before we stop the video? Uh, no, just to reiterate again what you said about faculty development, because that's what was in my head as well. I can see how this is actually probably more useful for staff, maybe than um, certainly, I suppose, more kind of younger graduates and students, depending on what you're doing, because, yeah, I think it just allows another way to open up some conversations or have start those questions about practice. Yeah, I, I get where you're coming from, but I've done things similar to this with students. I've done uh, Troika consulting, mm -hmm. which is another thing that we have on our site. Uh, and students tend to have a lot of good advice for each other. So oh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure they do. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, this is maybe just what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah, but I, I can see it with faculty more obviously. Yeah, in that sense that they probably really have really good advice to give each other. Well, and in terms of students, I'm sorry, Sheila. Um, in terms of students, I was going to say I think that this could be a great thing to do at the midterm. Like I know we do uh, midterm course evaluations that are much more formal, and like we come in as an instructional designer and run a whole thing that takes like a half an hour sometimes, or we got some other ways to do it asynchronously, but I could see a faculty member running this for themselves as like a midterm course feedback. And then you've got all these slides with all this feedback from all these students and the students are giving each other, um, you know, some advice about how to deal with some of these challenges. But I think it could really be very eye opening for a faculty member about what students are um, struggling with in a class. Yeah, yeah I agree. So I have, I know faculty at my institution who've been doing something similar to this, but without the response part. I really like the response part. They were doing it like Autumn was saying, sort of to, for the faculty member to collect feedback, but the part of other students responding to them, I think is really special here. So. Yeah. I think it also provides an opportunity to kind of slow down. In my experience, especially this semester, people are unfortunately really on edge and really struggling with a lot and 
I have I have been in groups of students or groups of faculty where it the conversation if if there isn't some space created just ends up with everybody be, you know getting to this point of like yes we are so distressed right now it has been such a difficult semester which is true I don't want to take away from from the sort of uniqueness of what is happening right now but then to also say okay we're going to actually give everyone a few minutes to really sit with the challenge and see like is there anything I can provide here other than commiseration, which is very important in some contexts as well, um, but to like validate and actually offer maybe some step some steps to take as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you everyone for joining us in this activity.